Kathleen Rose Perkins, you play Carol Rance, the head of programming for the network that airs Pucks, a terrible American rehash of a British, British classic. Tell us about what you love about work, uh, playing Carol. I love that there's uh, so many sides to her, and every season we get to see at least two or three new sides. And that's kind of, I'm kind of like a chameleon myself in a way. I don't really kind of bring one thing to the table. Depending on the situation and the person that I'm with, I end up, you know, filling the void in a social situation. And I think that's what she does. And that's what I love most about her because um, it keeps me on my toes. I have to really kind of be aware of what, what, what she's playing at all times, and it's really challenging. Yeah, it must be, because with Carol, um, she's, she's really insecure and she's really embattled. There's always something that she's battling against, obviously because it's a very tough industry uh, to, be, uh, to be working in. So what notes are you getting from the writers and director uh, each episode to kind of show that she's trying to be the strong woman um, in a position of power, but she's also, you know, crumbling under the pressure? Well, I think the reason why I got the job is that initially when I auditioned, I played her with a lot of vulnerability just because that's who I am. <laughs> I'm a pretty insecure, vulnerable, kind of wear my heart on my sleeve type of person as it is, but I can also kind of fake it until I make it um, pretty well. And I think that's what Carol does. And I think that, that they, you know, over the seasons, you know, when we, we initially started, the first season in its entirety was written already before anyone was cast, save for Matt LeBlanc. So um, we just kind of had to show up and do what they had written to the best of our abilities. And then the second and third season, they got to know us more as people. And <laughs> so when we opened up those scripts, we got to see what they thought of us and what we were able to play and bring to the table and add to the characters. So I think that they've kind of they've kind of written to my strong uh, suits you know over the years um, and we're going into the next season the fourth season will start at the end of uh, July we go back to London to shoot and um, it's more of the same we're just gonna keep going down the <laughs> it's kind of scary what they think of me <laughs> when, I, when I read it I'm like huh oh that's so Oh, goody. It's because yeah. I think that's what I bring to the table. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes total sense because um, in the first season, Carol was, you know, she, she was what she was, but you, we really started learning more about her as a person in the um, subsequent two seasons. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what we'll learn about her in the uh, fourth season. But um, <clears throat> Watch out. It's going to be Watch rough. <laughs> it's going to get scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how was this? How was this concept sold to you, or how did you become involved in it? Because it's really interesting that it's a, it's really a British American co-production, but much of it is done in England with you know British um, actors and crew, and it's but it's about an American show, which is a remake of a British show. So it starts doing my head in a little bit. Explain to me how you um, became involved in the show, apart from the audition itself. But how was this? concept sold to you and what was it about it that made you really want to be a part of it? Uh, well, the first audition I just, I didn't realize that it was an already picked up show for Showtime and that it was going to be shot in London and I didn't find that out until after I had read and then as I was leaving Def, uh, Jeffrey Cleric and David Crane who were who are the writers and creators, they were in the room and they said, yeah, we're, we're picked up already because I said, good luck with this pilot and they said, uh, no, 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 it's not a pilot, it's picked up already and it's going. To, we're shooting in London. And then luckily through that audition I got a call back and 
Matt LeBlanc was at the callback and there were more people and I was I couldn't breathe because I was so nervous because I wanted the job so bad because I really wanted to go to London and I really wanted to be on a show <laughs> because <laughs> before that I had done six pilots all of which well four of which had not been picked up and two of which got picked up but I got fired from so I just wanted to be on television as like a series regular on a show and this was an opportunity that I was just scared to death I wanted it so bad but luckily I didn't get in my way too much and I they saw something in what I did and they they cast me and um, I just been going along for the ride like it's pretty amazing to make fun of the the um, business that you work in um, and to kind of not, and I don't I don't really think of it as making fun I just <laughs> think of it as bringing to light what happens in a really entertaining and succinct and comedic way but it's nothing's out of the ballpark nothing's um, Everything that happens on this show has happened to the creators, the writers, or friends of theirs who are writers. So it's really just telling the tale of what it's like to be an artist in this industry. And uh, I'm just so I'm so happy to be a part of it. But I don't know if I'll ever get a job after this because I'm making fun of all the people that could give me jobs. <laughs> I wonder that because. <laughs> uh, people, for people who aren't really completely familiar with episodes, it's um it's Matt LeBlanc playing an exaggerated version of his of his public persona, I suppose. And the writers and um, the showrunners David Crane and Jeffrey Claric, they really skewer this public perception of him and all TV stars and the industry. And so I think that hits a nerve, especially with people who work in the industry that. Um, a lot of it rings true. What feedback do you get from your colleagues and uh, other people who work in Hollywood about, like, gee, guys, you really hit the nail on the head on that one? Is that what you, is that what you get a lot? It's so Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, it, that's the weird spiral of nuttiness that it, the response always is, and these are from executives. These are from the people that I'm... I'm playing. Yeah. They say, you are so spot on. I have a friend who I work right next to is exactly like Carol. And so you just great job because you really are nailing it. But they're, I'm playing them. It's so Hollywood <laughs> and beautiful and like, and I want them to write about it in episodes because yeah. it's just more fodder. It's just, they're, they're never ending every experience you have in this town and in this business can go on that show and it would be really entertaining and fun to watch especially with these writers because David Crane and Jeffrey Cleric are to me some of the best comedic writers ever in the history of comedy yeah that's um that's that's a really big call but you know you're probably not that far from the mark at least in terms of their reputations um, and the more grist they can get for the mill, the better. Because what I uh, what I see that episodes is trying to do, or what they're trying to do, is they're striving to be just really funny. So the laugh out loud factor on this show is very high because it's really economical scripts, and they just pump out these very um, fine tuned jokes. I, I can see that's what they're striving for. And is uh, how much of that are all of you as a cast working towards just to get those jokes honed perfectly? Oh, I mean, I respect their writing so well that, uh, and they, I, I want to show up knowing my lines verbatim. We don't change any words, and they, they ask us not to, but we also would never want to because they think of every single word as being character driven, character specific, um, earned. Every moment is earned through the words that they use. So when we show up to set, everybody, nobody brings their sides, nobody tries to figure something out. We just bring our best game to the set. And then David and Jeffrey are fantastic as well at, at, at directing a, a performance as well. So they just, 
I'm, I completely trust them and whatever they say goes. If they say bring it back 30% because I have a tendency to go a little, <laughs> a little lower for it sometimes. And it, I'll just trust anything they say um, because the best, it's my best work. That I, in my opinion, it's the best work that I've ever done. So I'd be a fool to question anything they say. <laughs> That's a lot of yeah. power well, they That's, have. I know, it really is. But it just shows that um, obviously they're onto something. They've been nominated twice now at the Emmys, two years in a row for writing, um, which is a really big achievement for a smaller show on, a, on Showtime. Um, but, you know, obviously they're doing something right as, as far as Emmy voters are concerned. And Matt LeBlanc has been nominated um, twice already. So the show is certainly on the Emmy radar. And speaking of Matt, you guys don't really get to work with each other very often, do you? It's he's you know he's the star of the show, and you probably haven't shared that many scenes together. He told me I a funny. Know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Um, he the, the third season was the first time we as characters had dialogue together, and right. it was only four lines, and it ended with him telling me to go off off. So. <laughs> It's not a good relationship. It's really not. It's it's quite sad. But um, I spoke to him last week, and he said that he loves playing a trick on you whenever you guys are um, out into doing publicity or whatever, even on set. He'll stand with his back to you, and you get really upset with him. And um, he said that he just absolutely loves doing it. And he told me to make sure I brought it up with you today. So I just want you to have a right of reply for your, um, your the star of your show, Matt LeBlanc. He's oh, I have. I have four older brothers uh, that I grew up with, um, and now he's he's like my fifth, and I hate him <laughs> <laughs> in the best possible way. I hate him. <laughs> he's so he loves to tease, and he knows exactly what push buttons to push for me. And I just I fall I like him just this goofy little sister around him, and I. I just want his approval and his appreciation, and it's just all just awful. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. He always pushes me, and he's always he's just a big brother, and mm -hmm. um, he'd probably want me to say little brother, but I'm younger, so. <laughs> Let's put that out there, everybody, just so yeah. we're clear. Just so we're clear. <laughs> But, um, you know, who you do work with a lot um, is uh, Joseph May as Andy, who is the head of casting, and Daisy Haggard as Myra, who is the, that's the most beautiful irony that she is the least funniest person, not her as an actress, but the character, Myra, the least funniest person on the planet in the role as the head of comedy. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and when you guys work together, the three of you, um, you know, that, that actually is some of the highlights of the show. When um, Daisy... Well, it's you know, it's um the the writers are, are trying to show us how ridiculous I guess these casting sessions can be. Um, when Daisy does those negative facial expressions and the uh, and the disapproving noises, do you how do you keep a straight face? <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't. That's the blooper reel is comprised of like everybody else doing their you know mistakes of dialogue and all that kind of stuff and then it's when it gets to the network office it's just me Joe and Daisy she'll say her line which is just written in the script H M M M which is I would read it as hmm <laughs> but she she puts a, a, a thought behind every single one, and it's always like a really gross thought. Like sometimes I'll ask her what the thought is, and she'll tell me, and it's great that it's perfect. Like she's the best actress in the world because I go, I got that. I got that thought from what you did. <laughs> and the sound that she makes is just perfect, and it's just impossible for us to get through a take after she makes that sound, it's it's impossible. And we've we've all done our own impressions, our in-house impressions of of her, and nobody can get it perfect because she's just she's just a she's a she's made noise making an art form and yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And it, she's also just the most wonderful person. She's become a really 
good friend of mine, and I can't wait to go back to London just to be able to hang out with Joe and Daisy. They've both become really good friends of mine. So it's a good group, and I'm, I'm so privileged to be a part of it because they make me laugh, but they also are really professional, and they also are just cool to hang out with in, in London town. Yeah, yeah. Nolan? I don't yeah, know. No. Oh, look, okay, everybody, I think... <laughs> We're going to have to segue for a second because Kathleen, uh, you know, she apparently is a master of uh, accents, and um, I don't think <laughs> I don't think I would be remiss if I didn't ask you for the privilege of hearing your Australian accent, please. Okay, wh what can I tell you? <laughs> I'm so it's embarrassed. Just, I'm, I'm thinking like Meryl Streep level. It's it's really quite impressive. It is. Um, my, the dingoes ate my baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Now, speaking of accents, most of these people that you work with are doing an accent. You, you seem to be probably the only American, apart from Matt and um, I'm not even sure. Who else is American on that show? There's pretty much only four regular Americans. It's Mercea Monroe, uh, John Panko, uh, uh, me, and Matt. And then just a handful of other recurring characters that come in. But m most everyone is, is of... Uh, and Joe is actually Canadian, Joe May. So um, he can pass for American. But <laughs> everybody else is putting on an accent. And I hate it because they're so good at it. <laughs> you, Austra you Australians and the Brits just taking every role that we have, every yeah. good role, because you're so good at acting and accents. Yeah, we're a very greedy people, generally. Yeah! Just both, <laughs> both nationalities. But let's talk about another Brit that you work with, because a lot of your scenes are shared with Tamsin Gregg, and uh, she, she plays one of the two writers of the British show that has been translated in America. And you guys do a lot of the walk and talk, either on, you know, in the hills or on the beach. Um, which do you prefer more, the walk and talks or the scenes um, in the office with your casting and comedy um, programmers? Oh, I prefer the getting high scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a toss-up between, uh, honestly, Tamsin Gregg is one of the best. She's amazing, and it, she's taught me a lot about acting and, and you know, uh, how, to, how to do it. And she, um, I love working with her. She's such a giving, lovely scene partner, and she makes me laugh like crazy. And she, so, I, but, and I'm a big hiker, so I love to hike, but... Those scenes that they write around the the um, marijuana um, <laughs> are my favorite scenes because they just it's it's lovely to see two women talk and be vulnerable and um, and be high. It's just awesome. I and I it's such a privilege to be to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also I don't I don't smoke up. I don't really know how to do it. So um, it's kind of like, you know, doing something vicariously that I, <laughs> I don't have to try. It's like, you know, um, getting to kiss somebody. You're not really cheating. <laughs> That's it. But you get a little something out of it. And you this is kind of like pretending to be high. Uh, and without not going to the high. trouble. Yeah, without <laughs> actually getting high. Although... Whether or not that's actually happening on set is a mystery that you will all take to the grave, but let's just say you're not. I'm not telling let's anybody. Let's <laughs> now let's talk about episode highlights of episodes before we wrap up because um, we're talking about Emmys now. We're Gold Derby's and awards website and um, episodes is obviously on the Emmy radar. If you were to be nominated, just uh, you know, just let's just put that out there. Um, you've got to pick your highlight episode. Oh yeah, I didn't. I'm not sure if it's as funny as you think, but all right, let's just play devil's advocate. No, I love it. Put it out there. Get it Put done. It in let's the do ether. It. In the ether. Um, you've got to pick your best episode. That's what um, all actors have to do. They have to submit their one episode to the um, any judges for them to you know nominate. Uh, decide who wins. And I've given this some thought, but before I tell you what I think. I'd like to know what you think is your highlight episode from season three. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just the 
thinking of that just makes me my heart. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it really got good uh, in episodes seven and eight um, with around the caster and the you know beach scenes and the getting high. There was one scene. I think it might have been, I don't know if it was in 7 or 8, where I was getting high with um, Tamsin and, or with Beverly. We were not Tamsin and oh, Cassie, course. you know. And, uh, and, and it broke down to us just bawling together, like just crying because my life made her cry and that made me cry because she was crying. So... And that was one of my favorite scenes from when I from my when I first read it to when we shot it, and um, we shot it in like two or three takes. It was so quick because we were both so excited about doing it, and uh, and it ended in one of the best lines, I'd say. And it's a recall to her making food with whatever's left in the house. And I say, do you have any more of that chicken raisin cookie? S H I T. I don't know if I can swear here, but um, you can do it if you like. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of my favorite scenes. So I don't know. I think it's in uh, seven or eight. I'm not sure, but th those yeah. right around that time is my favorite stuff that I got to do this year. Um, what's <laughs> yours? <laughs> what would you well, submit? Well, funny you ask that. Um, I think. Well, first of all, I really think Carol's interplay with Castor is very good. So that's Chris Dimantinopoulos. He's he was a yeah. good addition to the cast and you know, even though even the first episode is where Carol is really, you know, she's trying her best to um impress him. But you're right, I think episodes always really ramps up towards the end of each season. And Matt also agreed with this last week. He he feels the later episodes are great because it's, he feels like the show is like a station with all the trains coming in to collide at the end of this at the end of each season and so <laughs> For you, um, it's a good analogy. I like it. It's like things are crashing is, and bashing. Actually. We um, definitely crash. <clears throat> yeah, you definitely crash. I can't remember where the high scene is. Is that in the finale? I'm not sure. But I think episode seven actually is your best episode anyway. It has all that stuff. Um, there is a particular scene that had me just in stitches on the floor. I just thought it was, and that, this is testament to the writers, but when you <clears throat> and Daisy and... Joe are uh, watching a TV screen to do a casting for another show and you just by the end of the scene you've completely decimated this actress. It's just, it's so evil, it's so evil, it's, there's nothing like, nothing on Game of Thrones is going to be as evil as this. <laughs> it is just so, but it, that, that was very good. Uh, so I would, if, if you happen to be in this predicament, go with episode 7. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you know, they added that scene last minute for us because they were short on that particular episode, and I think it was seven, and we talked throughout the entire uh, uh, actress's audition, and that was the joke. At the end, we just say, I don't know, she's not that great, I don't know, and we didn't listen to a thing that she said, and it's just, <laughs> it's awful. I can't imagine, I can't imagine where where they go, the writers go in their heads when they write this stuff. It's got to be dark, real dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dark stuff, but it's it's all good. <laughs> Kathleen, thank you so much for your time today. Good luck with um, season four, which is shooting uh, next month, and good luck as well for the upcoming awards season. We hope to see episodes well represented. Thank you so much. This was a pleasure. Thank you. And